Markle and Prince Harry have kicked off the second day of their royal tour to Fiji, arriving at the University of the South Pacific campus where they will observe a cultural performance on the effects of climate change. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex are currently on their major 16-day trip to Oceania, the first one the royal duo has done together since they tied the knot last May. Even though Meghan has cut down her schedule due to her pregnancy, which was announced as she left for Australia last week, the former suit actress will attend all her engagements in Fiji today. She stunned in a traditional pink dress this morning while visiting the University of the South Pacific campus. After observing a cultural performance, the royal couple will go their separate ways. Prince Harry will unveil the Queen's Commonwealth Canopy project and Meghan will visit the British High Commission and the Suva Market. Prince Harry has paid his respects at the National War Memorial, which commemorates both Fijian and British troops. Kensington Palace tweeted, links between the British military and Fiji continue to this day, with 1,350 active Fijian servicemen and women. The Duke met veterans from the Republic of Fiji military forces and the Royal British Legion Fiji. Meghan only stayed at Suva Market for a short period of time. According to reports, she did not speak to the women at the Women's Centre, which is specifically set up to inquash female entrepreneurs. Meghan is visiting Suva Market which supports the UN Women's Markets for Change Fiji. Women vendors sell the products they make in order to pay for their kids' education. Market vendor Nina Tuimita Koro said as they waited for the Duchess, they have been practicing their songs. M's Tuimita Koto said, at the moment, we're practicing two songs which we will sing for Her Royal Highness which is Mida Levita and the farewell song, Isa Isa Vu Logi Lasa Dina. After that, we'll gift them a bouquet of flowers. Meghan and Harry are about to go separate ways this afternoon. The Duke is expected to attend a ceremony at the Kuai Suva Forest site to unveil Fiji's contribution to the Queen's Commonwealth Canopy project. Meghan is heading to a reception at the British High Commissioner to Fiji's residence. Prince Harry also delivered a speech to university students. He said one of the greatest challenges as part of his new role as Commonwealth Youth Ambassador was to tackle climate change. In his address, he announced four new Queen Elizabeth scholarships. Meghan has delivered her first official speech of the royal tour in Fiji today with an emotional address about education, as she visited the University of the South Pacific with Prince Harry. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex are on their 16-day landmark tour to Oceania, which comes only a week after the royal duo announced Meghan's pregnancy. The pregnant Duchess scaled back her schedule in the past two days to rest but she returned in full form today and attended with Prince Harry the University of the South Pacific. Both royals made speeches to university students, but it was a big royal first for Meghan as it was the first time she delivered one on the royal tour. It was also only her second official speech after her cookbook launch in London. The Duchess started with the traditional greeting of Beulah Vinica and then addressed the students with a moving address about education. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry have arrived at the University of the South Pacific. The Duchess is wearing pink dress by designer brand figure. The New York-based brand is inspired by the Mediterranean and it costs $2,100. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex have arrived on Queensland's Fraser Island as their whirlwind tour down under continues, with Prince Harry taking part in a traditional welcome to country ceremony as a pregnant Meghan Markle rests at a luxury resort. After touching down in Queensland on Monday morning from Sydney, the royal couple went their separate ways. The Duke took the barge to the island, which was reportedly refurbished ahead of the occasion, while the Duchess, dressed in a maroon, polka dot dressed by in other stories, arrived on a whale-watching vessel. Crowds had lined up along the Kingfisher jetty to catch a glimpse of the couple as they stepped off their boats, with both the Duke and Duchess giving a wave to excited onlookers when they arrived. During their time on the island, the couple will be based at the luxurious Kingfisher Bay Resort, which boasts secluded beach houses, timber lodges surrounded by the bush and deco-friendly hotel rooms. Prince Harry and Meghan earlier appeared relaxed as they boarded a Royal Australian Air Force jet at Sydney Airport, bound for the Wilderness Island, 
after traveling from Admiralty House, their Harbor City accommodation. Hervey Bay Eco Marine Tourist posted a photo of the Duchess on their Instagram page with the caption, Very exciting day here today at the marina. The glowing Meghan Markle passing through on her way to Curry. Their Royal Highnesses are visiting Fraser Island or Curry as it is known by the traditional owners the Butchola people, as part of the dedication of the site to the Queen's Commonwealth Canopy, QCC. The QCC raises awareness of indigenous forests, and allows countries in the Commonwealth to exchange knowledge and ideas about the best practice for forest conservation. The Duke of Sussex later headed to Lake Mackenzie after the QCC dedication and meet with local elders to learn about the history of the island, before heading down to 75 Mile Beach as part of a busy day of engagements. Prince Harry took off his shoes and walked in the shallows of the lake after the welcome to country, where he had his feet brushed with leaves during the indigenous ceremony. The expecting Duchess of Sussex is foregoing her royal duties for the day due to the rough terrain of the island but there will be plenty for her to do even as tourist. Kensington Palace has confirmed Meghan will spend Monday relaxing at the resort, where the couple will spend the night but she is hoped to be well enough for a meet and greet with the public later in the afternoon. He spent a considerable amount of time talking to the local Butchola people who showed him around the world's largest sand island. The Duke was expected to take particular interest in his visit to the beach, as it served as a training base for an elite Z Special Force unit during World War II. The unit used the area to prepare for jungle and amphibious training ahead of missions into Asia and are credited with playing a major role in Australia's victory at Singapore Harbour. The ruins of the Z Force Commando School remain on the western side of the island, nearby the resort. While on Fraser Island, Prince Harry will also meet National Park Rangers to learn about the island's unique animal and plant life and its history of logging. Due to their famed toughness, Fraser Island's hardwood trees were used to build the London docks in the 1930s. Later, the Duke will head to Kingfisher Bay and walk along the jetty, hopefully with Meghan. The couple are expected to be greeted by an enthusiastic crowd of fans, as tickets to cross to Kingfisher Bay have sold out for the day. Fraser Island is the fourth stop on the royal couple's Australian leg of their tour, after they visited Sydney, Dubbo, in the New South Wales Central West, and Melbourne. Following their visit to Fraser Island, the royal couple are heading to Fiji, then Tonga before a trip back to Sydney for the closing ceremony of the Invictus Games. Their mammoth 16-day tour finishes in New Zealand. Prince Harry has spoken out for the first time since news broke of Meghan Markle's pregnancy. The Duke of Sussex thanked the Governor-General and Lady Cosgrove at Admiralty House for their hospitality at an afternoon reception, before speaking about Meghan's pregnancy. Good day, Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, he began. It is obviously great to be back in Australia and even more so because this is my wife's first visit here so I'm very excited to show her this wonderful country of yours. Australia is of course home to some of the world's best sporting talent, but what you are about to see at these Invictus Games will, quite literally, astound you. During the speech, he spoke of his love for the country, and said he was thrilled he and Meghan got to share their pregnancy news while in Australia. He added, a demonstration of the power of the human spirit, the power of sport to change lives and the power of feeling part of all of this from the stands. There really is something for everyone. Thank you Your Excellency and Lady Cosgrove for giving us your magnificent home for the week. We are inviting all of our mates in Sydney. Finally, we are both absolutely delighted to be here. We are really impressed to see you serving beer and tea at an afternoon reception in true Aussie style. We couldn't think of a better place to announce the upcoming baby. Yesterday, Kensington Palace officially confirmed that the Duchess of Sussex was expecting. Their Royal Highnesses the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are very pleased to announce that the Duchess of Sussex is expecting a baby in the spring of 2019, they shared on Twitter. The news came after it was revealed that Meghan gave her first major sit-down interview since joining the royal family. Previously. 
new idea learned that the palace was talking in riddles without stating the obvious before the royal tour to Australia and New Zealand before she was given the three men thaw clear.